G'day everyone, welcome to the Open Wheels channel. So I'm long overdue for a silversmithing video and got this stone from the last video. I thought I'd turn it into a uh, pendant, something to do. So this would be the view um, of me, if you got to see me most of the time. So um, yeah, you can't really, not much to look at anyway, but um, yeah, show you the work instead. All right, so. There's that stone. Um, thinking it might be a future giveaway even. Um, see what this turns out like anyway. Um, but yeah, I think I might give it away. So here's the uh, pieces, another four bits. Just a little bit of a wire for a loop. A little bit of this for a bale. There's our bezel. And some flat sheet I have to cut out for a base. And this is where the importance of a uh, nice even edge where the round starts to curve over from uh, and a flat base to sit on um, helps immensely. So when you're putting the bezel on, if it's wavering up and down, it makes it hard to get the bezel over nice and neat and flush and straight. So a nice cut and whoever works with it will very much thank you for that. It will make their job easier. Or they might have to trim it up a bit or something. Which loses carrot weight for what they pay for, which is not good. So a good cut's always important. So this bezel's also um, high enough to reach over, but you don't want it too high uh, for a couple of reasons. One, well, you're just starting to cover over the face of the stone then. And the second one is when you bezeling and pushing it bezel in it can bunch up and the longer overhang it just looks ugly with a big bunched up edge and you want it nice and flush and smooth and even so first up you pick the way it's going to go up for me I'd say that way um, the bezel join can either go you, you want it to not really be seen as such now a good join you won't see it anyway um, me, I like, because the solder's going to be there anyway, it really helps to have, for me, the join up the top where it hangs, because that's also where the loop uh, for the bale will be attached. And it attaches much easier with a pre-soldered join, because then you just flood it with more. It can only take up so much in that join before it floods up around the uh, loop. And you get a nice, smooth, even finish. Um, just yeah, makes things easier. That way you haven't got a solder join up here, a solder join down there. That's just me, not sure on the industry or anything. Just saying how I do things. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna wrap this around there. I'll go on and kneel this first. I'll show you that um, and what that means. So yeah, in this video, I'll sort of just go a little step by step. I'll try not to make it too long, but just to show you exactly what I've gone and done and how it was done and what you could possibly do yourself if you just go and buy some silver and get access to a bit of a gas torch some solder and some yeah anyway flux <laughs> um some pickle and no nah. if you're set up to do this though and you're learning so i'm going to go on and kneel this and then start wrapping it around the stone uh once that's done and it's all soldered up and joined uh and pickled that's where i make sure that the back base is sitting flat all the way around so I can sit it on the backing and it'll nicely join all the way around. Then once cut that out nice and neat, add the loop up the top, prepare the bale and um, clean it up and polish it. So over to the gas. Alright, so over here at the uh, workbench for soldering, silversmithing and melting heat stuff, all that sort of thing, um, whether it be for casting or whatever. So over here got the uh, bezel set. I'm just gonna apply a bit of heat with a gas torch, it's just LPG. And um, we don't want it glowing cherry red, ready to melt or anything, but what's happened here is Got a fresh piece of silver straight out of the uh, rolling mill from the shop, obviously pre-rolled. And 
I don't know if they do or don't anneal it properly. Anyway, it's been curved and bent and rolled and stretched and straightened and all the little, uh, the atoms basically, all the molecules in the uh, silver, they sort of bunch up, tighten up, spread out, and it's a bit of an uneven mix. So when you he apply heat and anneal it, you are actually uh, spacing out, um, if you will, the molecules inside to a, a, a nice, so that way when you when you bend it, uh, as you should know, the inside's bunching up, the outside's stretching. So if you've got some thick um, silver and you want to bend it, you bend it a bit, then you anneal it some more so that when you've bunched up the inside and stretched the outside, by annealing it part bent, it rearranges them again and allows you to bend it again, squashing them again instead of squashing them more. So we want the silver basically to relax. That's the gist of it, I think I'm trying to say. So, zoom in a bit. Grab the gas torch. And just gonna apply the heat up and down it. Keeping an eye on it, make sure it doesn't turn cherry red. But it won't be able to be done all at once. Um, in one hit, I'll just go from one end to the other and as long as I can see it heating up and turning an orangish color, which it's doing, Oops, it's gonna be hot. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Turn the gas off. We'll uh, grab these. Then we'll pick it up. And a bucket of water, just hurry, just off camera. Quench it. And uh, all safe to handle again. comes off a bit white rather than silver so now that's so soft and pliable ready to be bent okay first thing I'm going to want to do with this is straighten up a nice flush join because it's a bit messed up wherever that was trimmed from bought and this end where it's been snipped with the snips gets a bit of a point there which we've got to get rid of to make a nice uh, 90 degree if you can zoom right in and see that edge it needs to be like a flat face so it joins to another flat face so to speak um so yeah i'll uh, get this filed up flat file and don't have to push too hard just let the file do the work just Sort of like doing your fingernails. Make sure it's straight. sort of see that that edge is now square and I can go ahead and bend it.
two flush ends, end on end, nice tight join. Go over back to the to the gas and quickly heat it and heal it. See if it relaxes and moves out of shape. Double just check, just double check it stays in shape. Um, it should be good though where it is. So yeah, straight over. Um, you could have basically pickle it, yeah, but since I've really just cleanly filed that joint and didn't play with it with my fingers, uh, it should be bare silver in there. No need to pickle that. That's the only part that really needs to have the solder flow. The uh, flux that I use, um, it's going to clean the whole surface anyway, uh, and it leaves a layer to stop oxygen getting rushing straight back in, so then you've got time to put your solder in place reheat it the solder will sink down past that crust once it liquefies again uh, coming in contact with the solder without oxygenating ox yeah oxidizing <laughs> i'm not a scientist either and um it'll it'll flow nicely over the silver and that's why i've got to get it nicely on my join so that when it does flow it doesn't duck off down one side or the other it wants to suck into the join okay so here's the flux Easy flow flux paste. Just gonna pick him up somewhere near the back so I don't disturb the front. Use these ones a bit bent out of shape on that one. Um, just gonna do a quick dunk in there, tap off the excess. Uh, stop help helps stop fire scale if you're ever having that problem and want to know. Um, that's where the heat gets into it and the stain from the um, carbonizing of the, you know, on the edge of the certain heat where the impurities are burning off um, builds up and then it stains it black and you can't get that out. It's in the layers. It's hard to even file out. So anyway, my method of doing soldering isn't how I was taught. It's just how I've evolved because I find it easier. So for me, bring this back in the shop. It's gonna burn off this flux a bit. Some people say, oh, get your solder in there. Well, it's just gonna slide around and bubble around and move. And then it's already stuck there where you gotta keep the heat on it, balancing that while you get it back in place. So that now cleans up. Let us see right in for you. That surface at the front here. I'm just going to point a stick, so that all cleans up. It's got a layer of um, flux still over it, crust, so it's not going to turn white oxidizing, which is what stops solder touching the silver and flowing. Um, over here, we have our solder. Um, on the end of it. Where is it? There it is. And it's very snips. Sorry, I'm mucking around here. We only need sort of really a tiny amount, not much at all. I'll just drop that next to there. It's right there. So now I'm going to get my titanium pick. Touch it on the uh, in the flux, where are we? Just to get it just a little bit there uh, to make it tacky, so you can sort of yeah pick up your solder. And I'm just gonna balance that straddling up the top, right over the join. Um, let's move this now. Sorry. So as you can see, it's right up the top, straddling both sides of the join. So when I heat it up, it'll grab both sides, is the theory. Go come with the flame. Point this bit easier. Get me in the shot. 
see if we can get that. So yeah, flame on, see it's moving already. So give me a little pick. Faking back up top, that's just because of the flux bubbling around. Okay, so turn the flame down a little bit. I'm just gonna heat it up from the back, get it evenly heated up, and then bring that heat round to the front. Keep circling it and then focus it on where I want it to heat up the most. Which is the front on the join. And there it goes. Simple. Not sure if you saw that. So I'll flick him over, spin him around, and sorry, that way. That way I can get to the front. Just make sure that really got in there from the behind side. That's I'm off camera again. There we go. So there's a join. Let it quickly uh, go really shimmery silver, which you can see it's liquefied, and then you take the heat off once you can see it's gone all through the join. Um, again, and this time it will go into pickle, pickling solution. So there's that, there's that join. Nicely joined top to bottom. And the behind in the back. So, actually, I'm just going to spin it around. Don't let you fall off. And so, here's just a um, pickle solution. It's like a, a secretary acid type acid, but a bit stronger. Let me just chuck it in there. Leave it there to react while I get on with the next part. Maybe start making the bale. Okay. Making the loop for the bale, got a flat end already, and it's got to be round enough that this will fit in and not just jam up in. It's got to be able to flow a bit. So we pick a reasonable. Get this back. Reasonable thickness part of the uh, round here, and somewhere down there, I'd say. So if we come back to about. There, we can always get it to go bigger. It's harder to squish it and make it go smaller. So leave that poking out. Not much, just give it a bit of a start. Make sure it won't slip right out. Looks off camera, which it just did. Sorry that, let's start again. There, force it round. Once it goes round, you're like, well, how do I? Well, you've got to corkscrew it a bit. So I just shuffle this around that way, and then keep folding. Sometimes you got to push up against something, but there we start to get that, and then it's just coming around it, squishing those ends down a bit. So they fall in line. Take it off. Might just get those ends in a bit more actually. So then I'm going to run a blade through there, so that they cut flush, and then join. Since this side here, it's nice and neat, I'll just cut the other excess off along that, and ready to solder. So 
So I won't worry about showing you cutting again. You saw that bit before. All right, little cut. It's got a bit of overhang. Here's my little dust recycle collection pot with one bit already melted up. Just gonna relieve this piece of its off cut. Like so. And add that to the jar. If you get adds up, plus you make little little tiny balls for decals and stuff like that. So anyway, back to this. Straighten that up. Open it up a bit. Hmm. I'm gonna squeeze the file down there just to make sure both sides are. Sometimes the saw blade cuts on a little bit of an angle. And you want a nice flush join. So, and that one's pretty good. Sorry. So now I want those two to point at each other. So it's going to go out around a bit. Kind of like that. You can see there's a gap there, so I've got to squish them down a bit further yet. Okay, found it. <laughs> Better. All right, so that one's ready to solder, and I'll make that round again afterwards. And so I might go and quickly anneal this, and we'll give it a stamp. Actually, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'll stamp it before I bend it. I usually forget otherwise. Yeah, nicely annealed. Got the stamp, 95. Got the uh, it's gonna go down one end, so it'll be this end. I'm gonna go, go I'm going to go across it. Um, let's see which way I can't keep forgetting. the camera here so it's not that way so if we get that there kind of have it down past the bend so down here somewhere and I like to strike mine <laughs> quite a few times just to make sure the stamp does its job properly. Sometimes you can bounce out, so be very careful, but I like to make sure mine definitely goes in. Sometimes it stamps, and if it's slightly off to one side, the nine will come up, half faded two and a partial five, <laughs> or the other way around. So I go straight down, slightly left, slightly right, just a smidge. So it'd be two down, one left, one right. But anyway, it can, Buckle your silver a little bit. So I'm just going to, while I'm here, a bit of panel beading. I'm straighten that up. There we go. Good as new. So, over and bend it. File it, ready for the loop. I've just soldered the loop as well. Um, but then we'll get on to doing the back.
There we go. It's got a nice little file there. Tape it in. Same at the back so they can meet nicely. Give it the articulation at the bottom. As I stamp the right way up for the back, it needs to be filed and cleaned up now. And ready for later on when it's going to be sanded and polished. So I've got to get it on the inside there and tidy up this. Around where you bend it, it does a bit of a bow from this point to this tip are higher than the center. So they've got to be worn down to get a nice finish. So that's that. Uh, next bit will be cutting out a little section of this for the back. But first I'll get the bezel out the pickle, reshape it around the stain to make sure it's the right shape, slide it out, making sure the bottom's all flat and then I can mark out how big a piece I need to cut. take this off don't squish it and see how much I need now we'll get a pen I always like to get it near the edges and don't waste too much that way it's also less to cut off It's all sitting flat. Solder, cut the back, all the excess off of them around the back. And then solder this on. Um, cool it down again, put this on. This will have to all be um, pre sanded before I assemble it. Some parts get awkward to get into, so I'll get it down to a good polish before I start soldering it. Um, but that will be after I've done all this. Yeah. Always do the cutting in the light first, so I'll get that out of there, take that, and head over to the gas. Uh, just got to quickly flatten this out, so to get it like that, on a flat surface, get the block that's flat, place that flat on top. And tap that into place. And that will sit nicely. No gaps. Beautiful. Alright. Over here. Flux. Pick that up again. Now this will have enough flux for both pieces. Too much flux is not good. Makes a heck of a mess. All right, so yeah, you've seen this before. I'll just fast play it.
Okay, we got that all cleaned up. It's uh, sealed all the way around. No little pinholes. It's pretty good. So now I'm just gonna snip it out around it and uh, get the excess off so I can file it back with a file. Like so. Add those pieces. Never waste. Always to be remelted. Re and on with the file. Okay, got the right file. And I'm just going to go around the edges, kind of like that. So it's all nicely filed. <laughs> and now. Um, I'll probably go through the sandpapers with it to give it a bit of a pre-polish to get oops, off camera to get um, around the top here especially done for when this goes on it's really awkward to get into those little narrow spots so I'll get that out of the way now uh, this one right by the join I like to file a little half round I'll mark into it. Easy to hold. There we go. And just run that over the join. Off camera again. God. Run that over the join a few times. And that'll help it contour to the shape of the bezel, uh, to the, yeah, the bezel setting. Rather than just a flat surface, it'll create more contact. So just that little little half round file mark there helps it sit more flush against there. Probably needs to come down a bit more. But the solder will fill that gap. So I'll just get on with sanding these and come back in a sec. All right. So I've done a 400. Well, filed it 400 at it and went up to 800 just around the, the top here um, i'll get to the uh, 12 or 15 and then the polish afterwards but i didn't want to go too far with it because i'm only going to have to do it again on the rest of it anyway and i can get to that so now all that's left to do solder it all together then give it another quick soak in the pickle then final sanding polishing and then set soldered together beautifully got it the right way around stamp at the back <laughs> that's embarrassing when that happens <laughs> so yeah totally nicely together small chain um, this has got even though I sanded this and it's only to an 800 but you can see it's just hang on a sec put the light on Phil I'm not sure if it's coming up. There's a little bit of a whiteness to it. That's oxidization of the silver. Now, that's what happens when your silver goes a bit off color. Starts getting a bit whitish. And apparently a way, I'm gonna have to investigate this, so don't quote me yet. But apparently a way if you've got polished silver that's just turned white, oxidized a bit, to clean it apparently is as simple as getting a stainless steel saucepan, putting a piece of aluminium at the bottom, putting some water in to submerge this in, and placing this, the silver, onto the aluminium in the pot. The theory there is the stainless steel pot allows whatever happens to happen, because it won't interfere, being stainless steel. And that is, the oxygen wants to bond with aluminium more than it wants to bond with silver. So when the silver goes into water with the aluminium, the oxygen transfers from the silver to the aluminium and in the process relieves it of all its whiteness, bringing back the whatever polish you had before. Um, I'll investigate that a little bit before I quote myself on that, but that's what I've read before about cleaning jewellery. Um, so anyway, that's that's what that is. So I'm going to go around, tidy this up again, and get it ready for setting. Okay, so it's polished up, pre-polished up to a uh, 1500. 
which I'll probably just go over again once I've got it set after the marks I'm going to leave. Um, I'll set this, but first, just to correct what I said a second ago, um, I left out one key ingredient, baking soda. I'll leave this um, recipe in the link in the description. Um, by the way, heads up, every single video I do, I put a description up and sometimes there's a link in it. Uh, always worth maybe checking out watching these videos. So I'll put this link in the description, but it's tarnished silver um, aluminium foil recipe. Bring one liter of water and one tablespoon baking soda and one piece of aluminium foil to the boil. Drop silverware in the pot for about 10 seconds, longer if very tight, if very tarnished, and then remove with kitchen tongs. So it's just, a, I think it's some sort of electrolysis type process. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in the description. You can read it for yourself. Anyway, on with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Put that down. Now, got my little setting tools here. I'll just zoom back out for a moment. And I'm going to be using, and this one mainly for around the corners, just to push them in first. Um, I'll probably just speed this up a bit. First things first is, yep, gotta put the stone in. Oh, it doesn't fit. No, I've just pushed the sides a little bit. There we go. Nice and tight fit. Doesn't take much to then just close those little gaps around it. Uh, just gotta watch that I don't push too hard with this, the way it sits flat with this there's no way of getting out of the way and it may just bend this up if I push down too hard. So I usually sit it on something or on the edge of a block. So probably I'll do it like this uh, and work my way around. Uh, first things first, grab a prong pusher. Um, put it there. Zoom in a bit for you guys. Get a camera angle. I'm just gonna put my hands in the way now. Something around there. So this is the first corner I'll tackle. I'm just gonna push it right on the point, but not all the way down. I'm sort of gonna roll it so it pushes from as down low as that curve goes on the stone, it starts pushing from there up on the silver. So I've pushed it in, it's made a bit of a dent, but now I've got two more little, so I'm gonna push those little points in and it's now like that with one two three points and so forth so then you just keep pushing those points over keeping it evenly distributed and that stops it bunching up in the corners you always want to get your corners out of the way first that's starting to bow out here a bit so I'll push that in Right, from getting away. So that starts that off. Now I get around this side, this side, and I may need to eventually um, take a bit of the bevel on this corner up here to make it easier to fold and snugly fit against the stone once over. But with the uh, Burnisher, I'll um, right, get that sorted. We'll see what happens. So pushing low, same again, two points. Gonna push on those points and just keep doing that. So I'll shut up and just keep doing this for a minute. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just fast lap the rest of this for you. That way you can just watch it go. Oh. I want to do with this tool uh, and I'll swap to the burnisher. I'm just gonna be careful running it around, don't hit the stone, a uh, few little things. So, with this little curved bit, I'm just gonna start 
rubbing along this edge and slowly working it. Silver's not super, it's very slightly malleable. So I can slightly push it and depress it out of shape without cracking the stone. I'm pushing and pressure on it. So we'll see how it'll go. I'll fast let this for you too. square and then going in to meet the stone so it's pushed in and then I've pushed really hard you kind of got to put a fair bit of pressure you may dent your fingers a bit <laughs> squishing um, believe it or not I've used a uh, open-ended spanner <laughs> and I blacked it on the uh, sanding machine gave it a nice finish and polished it up like a wood silver um, or even these if you wanted to you could just polish up get these rough marks out get it nice and smooth <laughs> and you can almost use anything to burnish as long as this is harder than this the silver sorry stone um, as long as this is harder than the silver it'll push in and work the silver so it's just steel in a certain shape these are just perfect for the job but doesn't mean if you haven't got one that you can't do it trust me i sell a lot of jewelry with a spanner <laughs> oh gosh i crack up sometimes just thinking about it so yeah so anyway i'll uh yeah start sanding this get it all looking pretty and polished and come back and show you the results but that's all set now nice and straight doesn't want to sit off to the side because the weight was off so it's pretty central as you can sort of tell even space either side so yeah there we go that I've decided we'll go into a pile <laughs> I'm gonna start up for uh, giveaways um, so that's one for the next giveaway uh, I'm not sure what happened between now and then but I haven't finished this giveaway and I'm <laughs> over 300 already so I might save it for the 500 mark space it out a bit and um, see what else I can add to the pile so there we are just a simple little bezel setting sterling silver with a black opal <laughs> um, inlaid with actual colourful opal I should say uh, black potch opal with uh, crystal opals from various fields so yeah I'll uh, quickly weigh that as a piece um, so roughly about five carats for the stain I'm pretty sure it was so probably just under four grams of silver so around about a dollar sixty cost price for the silver less scraps you're looking at around about ten dollars for the setting plus time and effort time and effort's what makes it same with the stone when you're looking at yeah the other video where this started from with just a piece of useless absolutely throw it off you go find it in the muller keeps anywhere um black potch no color just gets thrown away and what can be done with 
little chips also usually get washed down the drain thrown away um, they don't usually make it they'll fit through the screen and uh, <laughs> these are the bits that made it um, but it was still useless to the point of anyone actually thinking about doing too much with it um, so yeah I mean awesome bit of potch some chips that were useless and a less than $10 silver setting and your time and effort can produce something quite nice so this I suppose is me being a bit educational for you uh, if anyone wants to see how this is easily enough done don't be put off join a club learn silversmithing I do this from home as well as I go to the club so yeah get into it guys <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed this one um, not sure if I've left anything out from the beginning I was supposed to mention later but I'll figure it out in the next video if I have um, I won't forget to put that link in though so check the description and good luck to whoever wins the dice parcel uh, we'll be doing that Sunday so today's Thursday so another three days for me I'll wait till midnight my time that way actually no I'll have to wait till Monday to be honest just to be fair because the other side of the world has got to catch up um, give them the 16 hours or so and then yeah cut off period I'll tally them up so yeah either which it's just a bit of fun yeah hope you enjoyed cheers